With his mature third album, Niall Horan pledges to put on a good show, there's no crying over this one. Niall Horan is prepared to perform. The show, the third studio album by the former member of One Direction and current voice coach, was created during a lockdown following the March 2020 release of Heartbreak Weather. The title tune was written by Horan after he had the opportunity to sit still for the first time in probably 10 years, and according to him, it kickstarted the remainder of the album. According to Horan, the chorus basically tells us to be thankful for what we have. I think we lost some of the control we like to have as humans during the pandemic, and that just sparked so many bigger ideas in my head, the author says. It started a flow of inspiration. Fans might be startled to hear that none of them involve emotional suffering. There's no heartbreak on this one, Horan claims. If you're looking for a love song about heartbreak, I doubt you'll find it here. He claims that this is the primary distinction between his most recent, more mature effort and his earlier ones. Horan was interviewed by EW to see what more fans may anticipate from the show and his forthcoming tour. Daniel Horan, we only watch true crime, so I couldn't even tell you what the show was. However, I just thought that it would be a fantastic title for a love song. I started creating a love song that sounded opulent and whose lyrics were going to be enormous. Even though the song is relatively short, some of the statements are quite profound. And I adore the irony of the title, which sounds incredibly angry but isn't. At its core, the song is about love. What distinguishes the show from Flickr and Heartbreak Weather, your prior albums? It's most likely the development over the past seven years, from my first album to the second, you understand. I believe that each of those albums was appropriate for the stage of my life I was in at the time, and this one is ideal for. This CD sounds possibly the most sophisticated, in my opinion. This one doesn't include any heartbreak, which gives you the freedom to create a variety of tunes. That is perhaps the most significant distinction. Having trouble with this, I intentionally limited the album to 10 tracks so that, perhaps, when listeners reach track 10, they'll want to go back and listen to track 1. Instead than having a 16-track album and hope it's almost done, you know. I have a couple of favorites. They are all good because they each have an own feel, theme, and musical component. The one I would probably choose right now is You Could Start a Cult. Otherwise, the show. Probably the show, to be honest. Undoubtedly, I had to make some difficult choices. I aspire to adore each song. I'm not sure. At some point, I'll pick up writing again, and if I can surpass what I've already written, that's okay. There are a few laying around that could be turned into anything, but for the time being, they are only making it to my emails or drafts. Simply observing the fans. In my professional life, I saw them almost every evening. I'm eager to perform again, play the album I was unable to perform live, as well as this new one, and simply put on a very amazing show. The set's design is already something I'm attempting to plan. Oh, without a doubt. If I have a buddy who is an artist from the city I'm visiting and they chance to be there, I always try to convince them to join me in singing one of our songs together. I consider participating in La Bass Productions with Julia Michaels. It might be a really fun gig. I don't want to reveal too much for fear of Julia saying no. The ideal candidate would be someone I know from Chicago, San Francisco, or somewhere else, but that could change.